Now, don't get me wrong. When it comes to professional wrestling, for all the dumb things that fans can say or are attributed to fans, beyond question to me, the biggest idiots when it comes to professional wrestling who say the most idiotic, dumb, and out-of-touch things have to be the people that have been involved in professional wrestling. The promoters, the bookers, the creative team members, the wrestlers themselves, the agents. I mean, it's astounding to me some of the dumb crap that they say and some of the dumb crap that they believe and the dumb crap that they expect other people to believe and kiss their ass for saying. It's just astounding to me. But every once in a while, they're not entirely wrong. But they can be right and still be wrong, if that makes sense. And here's an example of this. Apparently, after their match on SmackDown, where Chris Jericho beat AJ Styles, some fan took to Twitter and voiced their displeasure, talking about, I believe, how Jericho was burying AJ Styles and he wasn't putting somebody over. And, you know, Jericho kind of snarked back at him. And I can't blame Jericho for snarking back at him in this particular case. Uh, because what the fan said was kind of dumb, and it missed the mark, and it was off point, and it just wasn't accurate. Um, and Chris Jericho responding as he did kind of was on the mark to a certain degree. You know, it kind of exposed the double standard of hypocrisy of, you know, if you lose to somebody, you're not winning like you need to to be built up. But at the same point in time, if you beat somebody, now you're burying them and you're not putting them over when you should. I get it. You know, and, and in the grand scheme of things, you're talking about the first time they wrestled on Raw, AJ Styles won. The next time they wrestled on SmackDown, Chris Jericho won. So that makes it one-to-one. -one. Each has a victory over the other person. If anything, it squares up the playing field and it makes things level. It's not somebody burying somebody. I mean, Chris Jericho lost, and the next time he played him, or wrestled him in this case, he won. You know, happens in sports all the time. You beat a team one day, and the next day they beat you. It happens a lot. You know, early on in the season, they beat you. Then you come back and beat them out later on in the year. You know, so I wouldn't sit there and say Chris Jericho beating AJ Styles on SmackDown was burying somebody. I think that's stupid. But I think it speaks to the larger point here that is being missed and the larger point that everybody seems to kind of be missing the boat on and kind of speaks again to the whole topic of how out of touch the business is as a whole. Jericho beating AJ Styles is not stupid on SmackDown. It's not. Just like AJ Styles beating him on Raw, in theory, is not stupid. What's stupid about it is the fact that they've wrestled it all. What's stupid about it is we haven't even reached Fastlane yet, let alone WrestleMania 32, and these guys have already wrestled twice. This, to me, is that type of match, and I've talked about it so many times, where you have this guy versus this guy. There's no titles on the line. It's just this great wrestler versus that great wrestler, or this badass versus this badass, or this character versus this character, and you have a go at it to find out who the better man is. It's that type of mid-card mania match that had, can have meaning that I think every really good WrestleMania has to have and should have. It's just that match that has something more about it. It's not about titles. It's a personal issue, or it's just about going out and seeing who the better man is going to be. Like a lot of people will point to WrestleMania 21, Shawn Michaels and Kurt Angle. WrestleMania 19, Chris Jericho versus Shawn Michaels would be another example. WrestleMania 24, you would look at Shawn Michaels versus Ric Flair. You know, these type of matches, yeah, ironically enough, they all featured Michaels, but... It speaks to the larger point here, what WrestleMania 25 should have been between Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy and could have been, but ultimately wasn't. It was about a deeper issue. It was about two guys working out a problem. It was about two guys seeing who the better man was. It was about history, and it was about story, and it was about so many different things. It was about the appeal of, in a certain case, like Shawn Michaels versus a Ric Flair, you know, what's going to happen here? A Shawn Michaels versus a Kurt Angle, what could happen? Shawn Michaels versus Chris Jericho, for many, would be perceived as a dream match. At WrestleMania 19, what's going to happen there? You know, it's one of those things. WrestleMania 25, what you got between Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. Now you throw The Undertaker into the mix. It's one of those things. What could happen? What would happen at WrestleMania, even if they had wrestled in the past before in the 90s? It didn't matter. 
it was still that mid-card mania match where it wasn't about titles. It was about the legacies. It was about their careers. It was about their achievements. It was about personal animosity. It was about who's the better man. It was about all of those things. And to me, in a lot of ways, Chris Jericho versus AJ Styles should have been that type of WrestleMania match for this year. AJ Styles never wrestled in a WWE ring in 2016. To the best of my knowledge, Chris Jericho and AJ Styles have never wrestled against each other anywhere in the entire world at any point in time. So you've got that feeling of freshness. You've got that feeling of newness. And so often in today's business where it's so much a regurgitation or repackaging of stuff that has already happened, it's a lot of rematch mania as opposed to main event feeling match mania, if you will. So much of it feels like repeat. It's so much of it's on a repeat cycle. And so much of it feels like regurgitation. And it feels like repetition. And we've seen it before because, frankly, we have. And no matter how much you try to throw the window dressing on it, you know, it just, it's one of those things, it's like Sting versus The Undertaker, not Sting versus The Undertaker, excuse me, String, Sting versus Triple H at WrestleMania 31. Again, talking about that mid-card match at Mania that felt huge because there were so many different things at stake and none of them had anything to do with the world title whatsoever. Those type of matches are so important and so critical to a show's success, especially when it comes to WrestleMania. To me, a great WrestleMania has to have that match on the card. Because it sets so many things in motion. You know, it's one of those things that helps bridge the gap between the first half of the show and launches you to the second half of the show. And this type of match could have been it. And how organic it could be. One of those ultimate, who's the better man? We've never seen it. What could happen? We don't know. Chris Jericho, AJ Styles. It doesn't have to be about a title. It just can be about pride and bragging rights and who's better. Y2J, after all these years and all these accomplishments, future WWE Hall of Famer, holding on, trying to keep his legacy intact, trying to prove that he still got it, trying to prove he's the better man. AJ Styles now coming to the WWE after so many years of building a reputation wrestling all over the world. Now he's come to the big ocean and he's trying to prove himself a great way. And he's trying to prove himself and show that he is Jericho's equal, show that he could be a future Hall of Famer, show that he can be the better man. And so many elements of these, this and so many of the dynamics could work so incredibly well. And it was one of these things that you could have really had as a positive for WrestleMania 32. And now to me you don't have it, and that's the whole shame about this, is the WWE just can't help themselves. They just have to be like fools and rush right fucking in. You debut AJ Styles at the Royal Rumble, and then the next night on Raw, he's already freaking touching Chris Jericho. They're already wrestling. Then a week or two later, they're already wrestling again at SmackDown. You've had them wrestle twice on television in one-on-one -on -one matches with decisive clear finishes, mind you, before you've even gotten to the next pay-per-view, let alone the pay-per-view after that, which, oh, by the way, you're trying to sell over 100,000 tickets to, and it's your biggest show of the fucking year. This lack of patience and this impetus to hotshot with the WWE is so frustrating. So when that fan talks about Jericho putting him over, not putting him over here and it's burying him, that's stupid and that's horseshit. And the whole thing of talking about, you know, this is good and this is bad. No, it's fucking stupid. I'm tired of so much of the WWE's build-up to a big match being match, match, motherfucking match. Why go there if you need to? don't need to? Why go there when you don't have to? And when it came to Chris Jericho versus AJ Styles, if that was where you wanted to go at WrestleMania, and who even knows at this point if that's where they're going at WrestleMania, but it makes it seem even more ridiculous if you've got that direction being played out for WrestleMania. Because you've had these two assholes wrestle each other several freaking times already. Imagine how much more special it would be is at the Royal Rumble you tease it for a moment. It's that old Vince thing. If you throw it out there for a moment and you see what happens. And you hear the crowd really respond and you can see that the crowd could really get behind this. And then you work them together in tag matches where they're on the same side. And you even maybe give them a tag match at fast lane that they win, and it's all this and all that. And then they're looking around at each other like a couple of knuckleheads, wondering what the fuck do we do now for WrestleMania? You know, maybe you tease that animosity, and you sit there and have one cost the other the match, incidentally or not, then the other one does it. You know, and you start to build up some heat, build up a little bit of attention, not to where anybody has to work as the villain or work as the hero, 
but given a reason for it. And now you've got that appeal of Chris Jericho, AJ Styles, WrestleMania 32. These guys have never wrestled each other before. We've never seen it in the WWE. Now we're going to see it in front of 100 plus thousand people at the biggest show of them all. And now it just becomes a situation where it's like so many other things. It feels like tired hand. And when you get to the point where there should be that big climactic payoff and that big dramatic moment, it's going to fall flat on its fucking face, and it's going to thud. And then sure, some of you are going to sit there and say, it doesn't matter. They have great matches every time. Well, at some point in time, it's about more than fucking that. At some point in time, it needs to mean something. At some point in time, it should deliver something bigger than just the freaking match itself. And by God, based on how many times they've already wrestled each other now and how many more times they could wrestle each other between WrestleMania now and WrestleMania 32, if they actually do face each other at WrestleMania 32... I would expect some type of five-star classic because they've had enough fucking practice to get to that point. You know, it's, if you're going to do this, then do it on a couple of house shows and kind of throw it out there, you know, and kind of see how the crowd responds and see what you get and see what the chemistry of these two guys are. Figure out, you know, hey, what will work, what won't work, where do we need to go, what direction should we take this match at WrestleMania 32? Now, to me, this is the WWE dropping yet another golden opportunity. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean 100% that I would go with Chris Jericho versus AJ Styles at WrestleMania 32, or that would have been my plan. But if that's what you're going to do, and if that's going to be the plan, it could still be a good plan. In fact, it could be a really good plan, and it could have been a great plan. Except for the fact that the WWE, in my opinion, has already squandered it. The WWE has already went to the well too often, too soon, as they so often do. Instead of always trying to sit there from one week to the next and just fill television time, why don't we plan out how do you get to this point in this moment where this match can feel like a big, huge deal? And some of the people that sheepishly buy into the shit need to stop sitting there and accepting the WWE propaganda and spin about how great this is and all awesome this is. No, it's fucking stupid. And at some point in time, we should expect better. And at some point in time, we should demand better. Here's a perfect opportunity. Mid-card match, WrestleMania 32, that could have significance in the meeting and a show that is so badly and desperately going to need it, and the WWE has already blown their fucking wad. And of course they fucking have. And of course there are going to be some segments of the fan base that think that this is just fine. No, it's not fucking fine. It's fucking stupid. And it perfectly epitomizes so many of the problems with the WWE today. At a time where we want fresh, and we want new, and we want different, here was something that naturally would feel all of those things, fresh, new, different. And now the WWE is going out of their way to make it feel like the same old shit. Oh, so what? We can get a Chris Jericho heel turn? whoop the fucking do the hell does that mean? It's a bunch of bullshit. The fact that these guys have already wrestled twice, and we haven't even made it to the Fastlane pay-per-view, that's the issue. Chris Jericho beating an AJ Styles on SmackDown, that's not an issue. The bigger issue is just the stupidity of all of this and how the WWE is going about this, and I'm tired of it. How can you be so stupid? How can you be so dense? How can you be so impatient? How can you be so lacking in any vision or long-term booking knowledge or understanding or patience? I'm telling you, patience is a virtue. And man, it could have really paid off in a big way for this company at WrestleMania 32 with these two guys and this match at that time. Now they've already burned it out. I don't want to even see it anymore. Way to go. Mission accomplished, WWE, you idiots.